to order now. It is 523. I'm going to go down the list quickly uh, uh, to make sure that we have a quorum. I'm pretty sure that we do. So I'm here. Amanda is not here. I didn't hear from her at all. Um, Paul Sadik's here. Paul Lubin is on Zoom. Nicole is here. Jeff is here. Kent is here. Wayne J is on Zoom. Norm is here. Robin Kendrick is not. She had said she was going to be absent. Carlos is here. Well, we are really beginning of the alphabet heavy here, aren't we? Um, and Tom Matthews, the alternate, had said that he could not be here either. So we definitely have a quorum. Um, oh, Button wants to just move around. Um, so our agenda is brief but has uh, important things on it. The first item is to receive the minutes from the previous meeting. Those were passed out while we were waiting to get the Zoom working. So does anybody have a motion on the minutes? Motion to accept. Second. Am I on the list? You, you're not on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take Carlos' a second as a motion. Accept the meeting minutes from last meeting. I guess I have to be quiet. <laughs> uh, is there a second to that? I'll second it. Okay, so we have the motion from Carlos. One. Second from Kent to accept the minutes. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Um, we have Zoom, so we're going to have to do roll call every time we do a vote. I'm just going to go around the table. Paul, Sadik. I abstained because it says I'm not, I wasn't here. Yeah, your list. Oh, it does say, it does say he wasn't here. All right. So Paul is abstaining. Uh, Norm. <coughs> Aye. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ken. Aye. Aye. Margaret. Wait a minute. Not no, Margaret, you're not on here either. <laughs> All these extra people thrown at me. Carlos. Aye. President. Jeff. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Mike. Aye. Uh, Paul Lubin. I, I abstain because I haven't read them. That's true, because you're not here to see them. Uh, and Wayne. As Paul did, I abstain. Okay, so two Pauls and a Wayne have abstained. Eyes from everybody else. Uh, we'll call the minutes approved. Old business, we have nothing. Uh, if I can interrupt for a second, when I... When I mute myself, Mike, I lose I lose the audio from you as well, so I have to stay unmuted. I apologize. Oh no, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, I'm gonna let me test this. Let me try muting you on this end and see if it does the same thing. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll do that for now. Hi. Um, so we do have, as far as for the minutes, we have a few people who are not members, Margaret uh, French and Deb Petty, who tricked me earlier, and Linda Fournier, who just came in. Uh, so we have the old business. We have none under new business. This was what I was hoping Amanda would be here for. She had sent me um, an email suggesting that we ask for data, and I'm probably going to paraphrase it poorly, data from both the Council on Aging and the libraries about their use and their use particularly with times of day. So we know, for example, the library takes um, a tally of how many people come in over the course of a day as opposed to time. But Amanda's thinking, uh, without wanting to speak for her, was that we might be able to identify peak times, like the library has a lot of people coming in between noon and two, but the COA has a lot of people between nine and 11. And, and that might help with some of the planning for the communal spaces. So if nobody has an objection to that, we'll ask both departments if for maybe the next six months they could keep track of how many people they have coming in at certain times of day, maybe you know by the hour. We not to get too terribly specific about that. Is, does anybody have a anybody have an issue or a concern or a complaint with that? Mike. Well, Wayne, okay. Thank you. Whoops. Hold on. I. You should be able to just click on him himself. Yeah, it's. A, I can only ask him to unmute. I can't actually unmute him. It well, looks like. You mute him? You mute yeah, him. I did, and it's not giving me the. So he has to unmute himself. Yeah, Wayne, you're you're gonna have to unmute yourself. Apparently, I can't do that for you. 
three years well, in, and we still haven't anymore. figured this out. Oh, there it is. There oh. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, my only comment was um, when we identify those peak times, it's only considering current programs, but as we as we improve the facilities and hopefully add programs, we not we may not be able to uh, anticipate what those new program timelines might be. Um, you know, new new programs at the COA might be at two o'clock where now there's nothing. No, that's a good point. And and Nicole's nodding. I don't know if you guys on Zoom can see her or not. Um, no, I only see Paul. I only really see Paul. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you look like half of a snowman. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, you can see that much of me. I can't see anything over here. No, no, I don't. No, no. It is only a white dot. <laughs> oh, all right. You literally look, look like a snowman without a fix. Yeah, the only camera would be my. my okay. Camera, so it's just, so oh, face right. And that was there. that was doing the absurdly close shot that nobody wants to see. I think you're gonna have to get a lesson on how to hook into the main system. And mm. so there's one coming up. Okay. <laughs> Some lesson coming up. I like it. Um, so I, I think Wayne's point is well taken. Uh, we may be limited by the fact that we, we can only collect data currently for what, but that might be an opportunity, uh, for both departments to get an idea from the users. Hey, if we offered this, would you come to it? And then that may give us some, some hint, um, of what we could project for. Um, is there any other input on that particular subject? Okay, it doesn't look like it. So the other item on our agenda is to hear from ACG, which is Architectural Consulting Group, about uh, they've produced a document, and, and we got this in hard copy today, so I know Wayne and, and Paul won't have it. Uh, this is their review of the proposed combined COA and library facility. And um, I'm sorry. Mike Josephek. Mike Josephek is here from ACG. He's on the other side of the room from me, so Paul and Wayne, if you can't hear him, let me know and we'll we'll figure out a way to get you closer to where he is. Uh, but okay. take it away. Uh, good evening. Um, so we looked at, uh, we were asked to look at all the buildings in the town, actually, and we've done the reports on them. We gave it's a train. Okay. Can't you hear me? Can't you hear me? Why, why don't you try speaking into the microphone? That yeah, might help. Close. Is this helpful? Oh, that's projecting you more in this room for sure. <clears throat> all of our new things that we're still, all our new toys that we're still learning how to play. I know. <laughs> so anyway, we looked at this building actually uh, almost ten years ago. Am I much better? Much no, better. he's oh, much better. Okay. And uh, things they've done some improvements, some particularly around the outside uh, access. Uh, so. We looked at several different things. Number one, that building was basically a house that was purchased as a module, put on a foundation. And to, for the people that might be watching this later, it's the Council on Aging that we're talking about right now. Yes, Council okay. on Aging, yes. Uh, and that, that building was basically a module home that was converted into use as a senior center, Council on Aging building. Uh, back in the late 80s, things have changed dramatically over the course of time. Programs have increased. Um, types of programs have uh, changed. Um, and that building really does not serve your population well uh, as used for a uh, senior center or an adult center. Um, looking at it as a construction project, we did a little report and basically right you, now you are 3,930 square feet. Uh, the program requirements for the minimum requirements are like 6,588 square feet. Plus we get to add, uh, 30% for circulation, which brings that you required minimum requirements for a, a, a decent Council on Aging, Senior Center, Adult Center um, is uh, 8,564 square feet. To bring that building anywhere near code today 
because of the requirements of the code, if you spend more than 50% of the assessed value, you have to completely adhere to the new codes. So it's not just a simple thing like if you're putting a new bedroom on your house where you can get away with these sorts of things. Um, this job would have to be a prevailing wage rate job. And currently what we're finding uh, as a baseline number, it could be a little low, it could be a little high, but on the average around $700 a square foot to do new municipal buildings um, on the average. That would, if you're, if you're going to increase that building, change it, bring it to code, you're still, there's so many things that have to be done because you got a rabbit run hallway, you got little rooms off to each side, um, the basement has all these columns in it, so you don't have any great rooms there at all. Um, we would recommend against trying to rehab that building and put an addition on it. We think you'd be throwing good money after bad. Um, let me jump over to the library at this point. You also have two buildings that are being used by the library. Uh, one of them's uh, a lease deal. The other one is doesn't even have running water. Ten years ago, we told you you should do something with that building, those buildings. Those li that library s s sites are not serving your public adequately. Um, you've got 19th century buildings trying to service a 21st century population. It's way beyond time. Our recommendation would be to try and do something with those. There's no parking. There's no ability to add on or restructure those buildings. So basically, you're going to either keep those and keep doing what you're doing, or you need to find a new home for your library if you want to have a library for your community. So with that in mind, we started looking at combination. We're also looking, we do, we've done several uh, adult centers, senior centers, community centers around the state. Uh, one of the new th thoughts, I guess, uh, uh, more of a campus thing where you have multiple age groups able to use a facility that's built by municipality and some of the things cross over. Sometimes it could be as simple as uh, children's reading hour and a senior senator, citizen that likes to read to children would be able to do that function. So being able to have different age groups use a building uh, that meet all their needs. Seniors need uh, different things. For example, as we all know, uh, medical attention sometimes. They need a visiting nurse or or whatever have you, uh, it's a lot safer for them to come to a place like this than rather go to a walk-in clinic or an emergency room or something where they're probably going to get more uh, uh, opportunities to get ill than if they came to a, a private setting. So it's helpful to have that. But that's not to say that's the only people that could serve. It could serve other parts of your community as well. So with that in mind, I know someone, um, it says here, Mr. Landville put a plan together and we took that and we brought it up in 3D, so you could we modeled it on a computer, so you could see what his idea looked like, and we threw another couple of ideas in there as well, just to show you there's all kind of opportunities you could do. Um, so, our recommendation: if you're going to spend any money, the land that's sitting on the council on aging is more valuable than the building that's sitting there. Now, I don't know what you do with the building. One of the things that the COA does is have a little food pantry in there, which is basically one room. But now you've got the police station, which is functioning very well as a food pantry. And maybe that's one uh, program requirement that could shift over to those folks. The, the modular building in the back, maybe it could be sold. Maybe it could be relocated down to the DPW site or something. But I think if this is your site, it'd be best served to build a new freestanding building, no matter what it looks like. I, and if you look at the three different things I put in the package, those are just ideas that you could go with. Um, but your dollars would be better spent. You'd be able to build a 21st century building that's going to stretch into the, the, the 22nd. We're already 25% almost of the 21st century is gone already. So we had in 23. Two more years, 25% of our... Century is already out the window. We're still going by what they did in the first part 
of the 19th century. It's like time, time to move on. And, uh, I'm going to pass this around. We, some of my people, I didn't personally go, but I sent my staff. This was a conference, uh, COA had in, uh, uh, Falmouth last fall, and I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. You can see, I mean, you can see just in this room, the size, the ceiling heights. That building doesn't lend any of that. When you, you get your ceiling just about over your head, it's hard to do anything. Um, one of the things you want to have in a building is spacious, uh, airy spaces, lots of light, uh, opportunity to bring the outdoors into the inside, uh, places for people to get outside, patios, and, and interact. And to me personally, as a as a senior myself, uh, I'll be seventy in a few months. It'd be it's nice to see younger people doing things. It's nice to see if you're sitting there and maybe I'm reading a book and some little kids all excited because they're reading a book. So it, it's a good it's a good opportunity to bring more of your population into a central location. Uh, when we did the um, West, uh, e excuse me, the East, sorry, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, I can't, a senior center, at first they, they did the same th ideas, like they were fixated on the name. And one of the things maybe you should bring up is what's the name going to be? Library slash community, uh, what? But they, they chose the name, uh, the center at Sachem Rock. So it'd be more inviting to more of the population. Maybe that's something you folks could look at, trying to use more of a central theme and have more acceptance in the community for what you plan to do. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the dollar values, it's, it's to me wasting your money if you're going to try and rehab that building because of all the changes you have to do. Now, if you're just looking to do a little addition, I don't think that's going to serve what you're looking to do. It may be short term, may last four or five years, but that building is not going to provide you the services you want going into the future. Uh, and the libraries are definitely nothing you can do with them, but either stay there or get out of there. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to interject with two questions. Uh, first one, probably more for Deb. I know there's supposed to be some study about the land, the land in this. Have we gotten that back at all? That is on its uh, draft. I've gotten it. It's not finalized. Um, waiting. I, I sent to actually an email to ask if the wetlands had been delineated because he's showing me a plan with them sketched. Sure. But they're supposed to actually delineate them and give me accurate lines. Um, so that's close. Okay. So we'll have that information soon. You know, maybe in a month or so, I would say. All right. Because um, I know that will speak to some of where whatever we do is going to end up being situated. And then um, I know one of the things we said at the outset of this committee was we weren't going to worry about some of the other facilities. But I know that you might have given a brief presentation of the selectmen about the old police station that's being used as a food pantry. And it's come up a few different times about could that building be used for anything? Should that be demolished? Uh, I'd like to ask if you could just, in, in 50 words or less, let this group know what your findings are. Um, again, with the old police station, it's it's not a good candidate to rehabilitate at all. Uh, the amount of money you need to spend to make that building up to code and compliant and able to be functioned, it's not worth spending the dollars. You you The building is basically chunk. Um now, for what it's being used, it's perfect because you don't have to put any capital outlay. If they open the doors, they close the doors, they do their job. They don't ask for you for any money. Or maybe you pay for the electric. I don't know, but uh, they got private vendors uh, putting in coolers. It's perfect situation for for what it's being used as right now. Um, but it's not worth rehabilitating. It is, and I give a report on that as well. Um, the the building's uninsulated properly. Uh, I talked to somebody who's actually worked on the actual construction. The reason the dirt was up halfway up was that was providing insulation. Years ago, they took that out. Um, there's just so many issues. That, that I got a report, and I know you said 50 words or less. That's okay. But, I, there was but a it's concern. really not worth doing anything other than letting it do what it's doing right now. Right. And there was a concern, too, about demolish. There was something that came up about demolishing well, it. Well, if you're going to demolish it, there's a cost associated with that, too, naturally. And, you know, you'd have to figure on naturally nowadays, I mean, because of whatever 
particular asbestos is in there, uh, PCBs, uh, it's maybe in some of the uh, caulkings, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, products that are in there, it has to be tested and all that, and then cost of disposal of all the, uh, as soon as CMU gets painted, it's gonna go out as a, 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 a contaminated material. It's not like clean concrete, asphalt, mm -hmm. or brick. So there's a, there's a lot of costs associated with getting rid of buildings too. Mm -hmm. You can see Paul's going to... Your contamination issue that you're talking about, that only occurs when you demolish it. Right. Okay. Right. That building cannot be used for offices. In other words, the water department can't use it for an office. <laughs> we if put you a leave lot it the money. way it is, you can do anything you want. You That's own right. it, yeah. That's right. But what I'm saying is we put a lot of money in that building about... Eight, nine years ago, we redid the heating system, air condition, everything else. It wasn't big enough for the police officers. I mean, I know I spent 35 years working out of that building, yeah. okay? But what I'm saying to you is that that could be used for to mitigate some of the cramping that we have up in the town hall. I mean, we, in the water department, we tried to have a meeting two weeks ago. We had five or six people that came to the meeting. We ended up meeting in the hallway because yeah. you can't fit more than three people in the office. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, why can't you take that building and, and use it for something? Because we're not going to have a town hall for a while, a new town hall, or that one's not going to be remodeled for. I mean, what I'm saying is, yeah. your point, I can accept your point, but the story I had heard was that you did some tests and there's PCBs and there's... Uh, um, uh, What's the other thing you mentioned? Asbestos. asbestos and stuff. But that's not, Yeah. Th that's only when you start tearing it right, apart, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to make sure this yeah. is clear. No, as long as you use the things that you have and you're using them, there's no problem. That's right. It's when you go yeah. to start Taking rehabbing it, it changing right. it, additions and yeah. all that. That's when the so problem is. So it certainly is. could be used as office space where we're so darn cramped at the town hall. That's that's up to you. For Yeah, yeah. you can, it's your building. You can do what you want with so it. The, Absolutely. So the shell of it shouldn't be touched, but what happens inside of oh, it no, is... If you start tearing interior walls down, now you've got other issues. To, you're still going to deal with some issues, but it, it depends what you're planning to do in there. The walls, there's certain walls in there that are masonry walls. There's a few petitions that may be non-load you know, non bearing and stuff. Hmm. But the way that building is built, I mean, if you're going to use it the way it's shaped and you spend money, use it that way, which you're doing now. Somebody's using it now right. for a, a food pantry. So... But if you're going to start adding to it, remodeling it, now you're going to get into certain things that you're going to have to start complying with, and then you may not want to do that. And then the site, if this is the only piece of land you have that to build, whatever you're going to do for your future, or maybe it becomes a, 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 a component that's not going to be wanted in the future. Maybe another building. You start clearing your site, so now you have a clean site to do one building. Like Paul, and we did this... Ten years ago, we were looking to put one building up, right. which would house a lot of departments. So, I mean, that made sense then. Uh, it still makes sense today. But we certainly do have a lot of lands in the back behind the police station. We, we know we have that. That's where you could put a new facility. Am I right or wrong? Oh, here? behind this police station. Behind this police station, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's 92 acres in total, yeah. right? But we do have a lot of facilities already here. But we'll wait for those plans. I mean, they're, that's their thing. They're going to do all 92 acres, locate everything. Right. And then they're supposed to, at the end of that, give me what's available. What, what five, Is there five acres available where we could put a new building that could have access and parking and all of the things? And I, <clears throat> I, I think so. I mean, there seems to be plenty of land. We just got to wait to see where all our constraints are, which is the whole purpose of getting that done. So when... We look at it. We can determine what makes sense for now and for the future. If we needed to add another building in 25 years, let's not preclude that from happening. Let's not put the building out front and not out back, and then now we can't use out back. If we're going to put one in, like, okay, and there's room to put one out front and out back, maybe we do the one further in so that we have saved some room for future. You're right. You're absolutely right there. Yeah. But I'm glad that you brought it up because uh, – 
when I had heard the story that it was it was contam- contamination in the building. That's not that's not the case. <clears throat> no, no. Every every bill bill prior to nineteen eighty four is a contamination there. Even in the sheetrock and all the buildings, it's got asbestos in the joint mud. So every building that's out there prior, prior to nineteen eighty four has got some. F- Right. Form of contamination, asbestos, yeah. PCBs, lead. That's not an unsafe building to work. No, in. no. As long as everything's maintained and right. kept up, we use them forever. Excellent. It's just Can like I you said. Hold, hold, hold on one second, Wayne. I want to want to let Mike finish his, yeah, his thought. But as soon as you start taking it away, now that's when that's you start right, right. complying right. with the new codes that for disposal. Right. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm I'm going to start with Wayne. Uh, and then Paul Lubin, so I don't miss the folks that are on Zoom. And then I'm going to go through the, the room here just sort of in order and see if anybody's got any questions or thoughts. We're going to have about 15 to 20 minutes left. The selectmen are meeting at 630, and we've got to get time for that meeting to get set up. Uh, so, Wayne, go ahead, please. Well, that was my point. I know we were limited on time, and we seem to be spending a lot of time about what we could use the old police station for and perhaps town hall and we're not talking enough in my opinion about the coa library project which is what this subcommittee is all about um so i i I heard i heard information on the feasibility study of what might be a suitable size for the coa i don't believe i heard anything and i apologize if it was said because it was hard to hear at times but i didn't hear anything about the library sizes and i heard something about perhaps uh, the involvement of combo sites before, but uh, were those sites mentioned so that we could use as a reference? Um, so we, we don't have site information yet. That was uh, That's the report that we're still waiting on to come in about the wetlands and whatnot. But if, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, just review the numbers again, the, the square footage for the two uses. So the li- the library numbers is what you're looking for. Uh, so exi- right now you have... Uh, 4,328 square feet that you're using now. Uh, their required minimum, uh, for their program would be 5,197 plus circulation, which is another 30%. So they need 7,556 square feet as a minimum. Probably they could use more, I'm sure, but based on what the population is, et cetera, that would be a minimum number. So the two minimums combined is roughly 16,000 square feet, 7,556 and the 8,564. Okay, and that's correct. Now, if you built one building, a lot of that square footage can be reduced because you now would have the ability to multitask, share rooms. You'd only need, for example, uh, let's say one set or whatever population of use uh, handicapped bathrooms, regular bathrooms, um, janitor's closets, conference rooms that could be shared, multi-space rooms that could be divided, opened. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, circulation. So you could, you could eliminate a lot of mul- uh, multiple uh, use of the same types if you built one building. Right. That was the hope. And was anything mentioned when we talked about land? Um, the the land that's located between the elementary school and the police station as a possible site for new construction. That that was mentioned, but that's again part of what we're we're waiting to hear back. We okay. know that there are Very some good. wetlands between. So for for anyone that's not familiar, this building, this police station, we're in now the highway department on Chase Road, the elementary school on Bullock Road share one fifty acre parcel. The other 42 acres is across Memorial Drive where the other uses are, are taking place. We know that between these three buildings, there are some wetlands out in the woods. We just don't know the extent of what that is. We know it's dry by the roads. Uh, so that's going to be a big driving part in this is waiting to get that, that land study back to know exactly what it is that we have to work with. Um, Thank you. I've taken up enough time. No, no, not at all. They're all good questions. Paul Lubin, do you have anything to to add at this point? No, no. Wayne Wayne uh, hit the points that I would have made, and and, and uh, I agree. We need to know a lot more about that stuff. But the things that you just that, that you have in your hands today, can you can you share that with us uh, by email or by text or something by email? Yes. Yes, I can. Yep. Okay. Deb Deb is saying yes. So that. Um, they came in to us today, but we'll get those out by email to, to you guys and the folks that aren't here. Um, 
Uh, Linda, do you have it? No. <laughs> Jeff, do you have anything to? I guess thank you for the confirmation and the, um, I, I think it kind of define you you well defined the problem statement. Pass this on for now and I'll, I'll grab it again after. Carlos, go ahead. Well, like, like any uh, planning that needs to be done, this is a great start. Letting us know what we need for minimum square footage. Letting us know where things sit with the other buildings. So as we continue more and more meetings, we'll get more and more answers. And I think yeah, this is a, a great start. This is, I think, probably our first true meeting in a sense. Now we have a way forward. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Deb. I have a couple of comments. Um, as you know, I, I talk to department heads and whatnot throughout my travels during the day. I think one of the things that I, I was talking with Nicole today um, about the library is that we probably need to, you know, when we're designing this building, also think about some clear separations. And, and that may also come into play with the grant. So I do have a question in terms of when, I'm sorry, I probably asked you this, but when is the library study, when is that slated to be done? Um, I'm not sure about the, the building. Yeah. I don't know that I have a deadline. She said it's about an eight-month process. And we just started, right? So, so, okay. So we got a little ways to go with that. Okay. I think one other thing I would say is, as um, uh, Mike Josephek had alluded to, and I thought it was a good idea, maybe this board could think about names for the building. And one of the questions I had to Nicole, I know sometimes the grants require the building to be called the library, like it has to have it in its title. So we have to confirm that. But maybe we do make the name more of a community center feeling name than um, the point was made that if you call it a senior center, it, it feels like it's only for seniors. And so I think that might be a suggestion that maybe this board could come up and look at names that they thought that maybe would feel more inclusive of all generations. And that's just a thought. Um, not sure what the board feels, but I have that thought. And then my guess, my, my last thought would be next steps and where we go from here. I, I think the, the middle thought that you had for certain, um, cause we all know at some point as a group, we're going to have to sell people on building this facility. And, uh, I hate to say it, but if you have folks that are not readers by hobby, they're not maybe going to support the library half of it. If you have people going to the ballot box who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and worried about how they're going to pay for their kids to go to college, they're not concerned with how the senior center is going to sit. If it is a community facility, if people understand that it's one facility that's going to serve everybody's needs, that's that's going to be a very good and important selling point. Um, Luann, do you have anything to add? <laughs> I said I'd go around the whole room. <laughs> All right. Margaret is, uh, some of you may know, is on the Conservation Commission, so she'll deal with the wetlands, and she's on the Finance Committee, so she'll tell us that this whole thing is too expensive and we can't do it. No, that's Kent's job. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the wetlands, though. Ah. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you have anything that you want to... So one of the biggest things, is, as Deb alluded to, is the wetlands out there have to be delineated um, so when you're talking, there's 52 acres, but there's wetlands. Now we've got a hundred foot buffer from those wetlands. And so it shrinks, it shrinks everything up. So we, we do have that kind of a problem when we're looking at wetlands. That was my commissioner's hat. Um, just, just, I'm not sure if you've got a breakdown of, of square footage, but, but the amount that you gave for the COA and for the library, do you have it separated with what would be um, like the, the um, multi-purpose room and Good question, possible yes. shared space? I knew you were going to ask that, so. There you go. That's what we, we put a proposed, we, fi we figured that um, around a 12,000 square foot, I think, let me see, uh, roughly a 11,960 square foot building would allow both programs to uh, have enough space and the joint circulation and sharing of spaces. So roughly rounded up to 12,000 square foot building. Uh, we'd also, and one of the uh, the gentlemen that drew the, Mr. Landerville drew that floor plan, I think. So we modeled it up in two stories because you're already buying the foundation 
and a roof and to add that second floor, if you're going to have room for the future, put the walls up now and get, get that second floor space. Uh, provided the elevator doesn't have to go in there right away, but you have the space available for it. So if you decide to get up there and build, then you, the shaft is there. Uh, the electrical requirements, heating and all that, plumbing, sprinkle and all that will be there wait, waiting for you. And uh, it would be a wise, the wisest investment of your money would be to uh, try and bring as many things together into that building for the future. And it, this is not unique to Freetown. This is going on all around the country, and particularly in Massachusetts. We're doing a, a COA building uh, on Martha's Vineyard now, at, uh, uh, which is right on the same site as their library. It's almost the same. Like, And they're talking about making a not only a visual connector, because the library building is already up, and it's been upgraded within the past two, three years. Now they want to build a complementary uh, COA building, which we also part community center because they have the same issues with the voters. They want to reach more of the public, not just, oh, if you're under 65, don't worry, but it's not your building. So trying to make more of a campus thought, more of a community um, sure. feeling to it so that you get everybody involved. Is Boy that- Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, uh, whatever needs to rent the space, uh, groups that want to rent a you know a room or whatever I don't but there's always that the whole sense of community. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking that might be the one in Oak Bluffs because they I think the library. This is in the we're in uh, in uh, West Tisbury. Oh, West Tis- okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Oak Bluffs. It's the library and the town hall that yeah. are near each other. Kent, do you have anything to? Uh, when I started thinking about this project. Uh, from the town finance point of view, are we going to have, I think I'm seeing close to 10 million here to do that, considering we have other things we've got to worry about? Uh, I understand the fire station's pretty well covered, but we don't know what's got to happen with vocational schools. I hear crazy numbers. It's going to cost us. I don't know if it's a one-time deal or a many-year deal. And we've got to be prepared for that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, I'll see in the COA, of course, a couple of deficiencies were pointed out tonight that I hadn't thought of, but I think we could do a couple of those modular pods, get 10, 15, maybe possibly 20 years out of it without them having to move. And the seniors, by virtue of being senior as I am, and many of us are, we want to see something while we can still enjoy it. That's what I'm thinking. I've, I've heard I've heard discussion of the pods from a few um, yeah. folks that are either using the senior center or that are on the COA board. Yeah, I've, um, I've uh, talked to a couple of members of the COA board. Uh, I wish Robin Kendrick was here because she's a strong advocate of getting two of those, and she thinks that'll get us. It might take only a year to get those in. Uh, we still don't know if we got to put an elevator in too and do all the upgrading for the ADA uh, and handicap and stuff. Right. Wouldn't be able to do elevators or much ADA. I don't think that they would have to require that because they're sort of a temporary standalone unit, even though we're talking about attaching yeah. them. They're, all right, well, they're not like adding on, they're temporary. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. A but, solution. Yeah, that's not what that is. It's not a 20 year solution. Maybe at a stretch, you maybe have five. Well, that's, that's more I'm thinking that. while we got other stuff that's maybe cooking and we know how we're paying for it, then we can worry about paying for a major COA deal. So our, our April meeting, and I'm not going to forget the, yeah. the last row of folks, but our April meeting is scheduled for the COA. Um, that might be something that maybe the uh, members of the Council on Aging itself, the board members, could come to our meeting and discuss that with us while we're there, and we'll have that would be an um, idea. We'll have their they input from invited, that as well. I'm sure they'd be interested in participating. Sure. Uh, to, to add to the numbers, so we we proposed that the cost of this combined building yeah. could be around just under ten million. Just so you have a number in your head. 
Yeah. Uh, the report we get is nine point something. Sure. Paul. I'm a senior. Okay. Well, you're only a young, uh, Dale you're only 60. a month younger. I know you guys didn't know that. <laughs> you're a day over sixty, Paul. I know you didn't know that. Listen, if that is the feeling of the seniors that they want a pod that they think is going to last them for twenty years, what does that do to the project? I mean, should we be? Should well, this project be? That's part of what we've got to figure. Just the library that we desperately need. Oh, I know you need the library. Right. There's no question. Well, and, 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 and the seniors are going to be happy 10 years down the road with a pod. I mean, what I'm hearing here mm -hmm. is that, you know, the seniors want something. They want it immediately. And I can understand yeah. that because we don't know when the guy upstairs is going exactly. to end the ticket. Okay. They may be knocking but, on our door tomorrow. I know that. You never but. know. But the thing here is that if that's what they want... What happens to the library project? Is that going to be a separate project? I thought we were put to, we had votes by yeah. subcommittees had votes. that said we're going right. to do this. And now all of a sudden, again, this will be the third time mm -hmm. that all of a sudden things have changed. So ultimately, it's just, to me, it's a waste of our time. Yeah, I it. Ultimately, uh, we've got to remember. <laughs> take a look at that book. You, you're going to see this. Uh, yeah. so, I don't see your. Oh, Wayne, hold on one second. Ultimately, what we have to remember here is the committee that's sitting here, the Board of Selectmen appointed us and charged us with doing X. Yes. And X, in our case, is a combined building for those two uses and a few other offices. Part of the reason I think it may be valuable to hear from the Council on Aging Board next month is they are obviously 50% of this project. If they're going to firmly say they don't want a part of what we're trying to do, then we need to get this group, that group, and the selectmen to sit down at a table and have that discussion. Yeah. Because we're charged with doing what we're charged with doing with. If half of our user base is going to say they don't want what we're doing, it's, it's going to derail us in the long term. And, and I don't think that's the direction we want to go in. I think we're trying to do something that's going to be long-lasting, but we... True. We, True. So both, both as as both everyone has mentioned, so let me put this group together based on the votes taken by the both the COA and library right. trustees. That said, moving forward, with this project is what we're here for. Now, as far as half and half, really, it's really a third, right? You have the seniors, you have the library, and potentially additional space for long term use, just like this building we're sitting in today. It's built for tomorrow. As we move forward with this committee, you're correct. The charge is moving forward with a building. What it costs, we don't know yet. Where it's going, we don't know yet. We will figure that out as we continue moving forward. I hear what they're saying about I want something now. We have a short-term solution, not a long-term. Odds are not long-term. I've spoken with the COA and their board, and they're on board. If they, if, I, if they tell me differently, we'll have that discussion once again. But we're here because everyone voted to be here. Right. And that's how we're moving forward. Yeah, that's we've got to keep that in focus. We 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 have to. And and but to to Paul's point here, uh, we have to keep that in focus, and we have to make sure that both of the constituent groups are on board. Because if if the council on aging were to say no, we absolutely don't want to be part of this, and they advise all the seniors, no, we don't want to be part of this, hmm. we're going to lose everything if we don't have the, the support of the that's, two groups. The libraries the are not going to get what they need. There is that potential, right. I understand, but and that's the point I was trying to make. Yeah, right. So that's that's why I do think it would be good to have the COA at the next meeting, as many right. of them as can come, because we we got to clear the air on that uh, as soon as we that. can. Also, thinking about other problems we've got coming down, that we don't know what it's going to cost. Sure. And there's a lot of seniors in town that are just making it by now, figuring tax levels and such. Uh, my neighborhood, I was a little shocked when I saw the bill, like what the property is worth. You never would have thought that in a son of Bay Shores. Oh, Lord, no. I mean, we had a house on, on Cliff Drive that sold for $1.3 million last year. And exactly. That is, that is not a neighborhood that, and I, I live there too, so I'm not disparaging. Yeah, I, that I is not a neighborhood where anybody thought there would ever be a million dollar house. Uh, was that house uh, a later thing, or was it one of the original ones that had been modified? You know, it, it was an original house, but it's been modified to the point where you would not guess that it was an original house. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to swing around the table. Nicole, do you have anything to add to all of this? Um, I guess just in regards to the grant, um, is the square footage that you're saying, that's like to solve like our immediate problems? Because to get the grant, it has to be for 30 years. So the building needs to last 30 years. So that's just, <clears throat> if we want to go for the grant, that's something that we're going to keep in mind. If we give them a, a low ball number, they're not going to approve the grant. Um, and there also is, for shared buildings, the library would have to have their own bathrooms, their own programming space, and their own HVAC controls. Those are, like, to get the grants, those are things that are required. And it's just to, you know, protect the library, because that's what they're interested yeah. in. So um, those are just things to keep in mind. That's what Debbie and I are probably talking about. You know, like, certain things you certainly can share, but you have to keep in mind that um, if you want to get them to cover 60% of the, 50 to 60% of the cost of the library half, we have to... Those, uh, that's that's vital to this project just so you understand i mean i know you're talking about financially but you know i've looked at the numbers i do have yeah, a plan I, moving I, forward i think we ought to sit down and talk a little yeah more absolutely um but the if we can possibly get a library grant for 50 percent of their portion of this mm -hmm. project yeah. that gets us where we need to go yeah it, it's vital. So we definitely want to accommodate what we need to to make to get that grant, which, you know, may be a three million dollar grant. You know, it's a, a substantial for us yeah, not to look, turn the other cheek. Wayne, Wayne, I haven't forgotten you yet, but I've got two more folks to get to who haven't spoken yet. And I'm just being mindful of the time. So I'm going to go to, to Norm and Paul first and then jump back to you. Okay. It's being covered. I'm all set. Oh, OK. Terrific. Back to the pod. I mean, it, that's just a supposedly a temporary solution to the space. My thing is, is I don't know if the town is going to want to spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever it costs to buy this pod mm -hmm. and then build a new building down the road. That's True. to me is just not going to fly. They're going to say we already gave you the money to do to expand and they're just not going to vote for a new building. So I think you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, oh, yep. Wayne, go ahead. Uh, my only to piggyback on that or to clarify it in my respect is to as part of the selling of, of that, if we were to put the pods again and, and uh, to address Paul Sadik's a comment. It is not a permanent solution. I think Kent was supporting the pods be permanent, but that building could be utilized, and maybe that's part of the whole plan. Is in in part of selling the new project is also to have a plan of how we're going to use the existing buildings, so that it's favorable and not something where people say, "Well, no, you've already got the old center and pods. You don't need anything else." We need to show how those that existing building with the pods can also provide support to other town agencies. Mm -hmm. Want me to comment on the? I just want to comment mm -hmm. on the. Sorry. Sure. The pods are temporary, so once the new building would be built, those pods could be repurposed. If we bought them, we could lease them too. But I don't think it makes financial sense. We purpose for many, many different things. So I, I. I do think there is a you know that piece of it that we would look at maybe what the uses would be whether it be storage or whether it be additional space for other other services that we we currently have because they're classroom pods they can be used as such so um, certainly something to think about and hash about before we go to town meeting and we should have that information available. Paul, well I, I've spoken a lot. But I'm going to comment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, on Kent's concerns. He has valid concerns, very valid concerns. And one of the things he mentioned is the regional school. Exactly. exactly. Right. And that's coming up. The regional plus the vocational. We that's what I'm talking about. The, the, vocational. Right. Vocational. Yeah, the vocational is going to hit us in less than a month. And that's going to be in April. We'll have a better perspective True. of where we're heading based on the vote. Yeah. Because if that doesn't pass, then we got a real serious issue. Right. Oh, not just us, the, the town as a whole. That's what I'm talking about. Government as a whole, as a whole. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Can um, I jump in again, Mike, real sure. fast? Yeah. Nicole, you talked about, um, I don't know if they can hear me, um, on the grant 
the library has to have their own controls of the HVAC, but it can be, you just need your own. It's um, a separate unit, just that we have to be able to control the temperature. Oh, so you can be a zone in an overall system. Right, yeah, right. so okay. two zone. Okay. Just because books need certain temperatures. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Um, and completely separate bathrooms. That would okay. Anyway. Which, yeah. which would Most make likely, sense yeah, with yeah. kids and, right. and stuff like that. Um, and then to Deb, is there anything out there for a COA grant? There is a CDBG grant that we could possibly get. Um, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Community <laughs> Development Block Grant. Yeah, <laughs> up to $1.3 million. I did apply for it last year. We did not get it. Okay. Um, I can certainly apply for it again. Um, they're not, they, probably when Lakeville built their library, they were very, the, they were getting a lot of them. They were handing them out a lot. I don't see a lot of them going out, okay. um, but we can certainly keep trying. But that's the maximum of $1.3 million on yeah. a CDBG grant. Has anybody... Um, we have two senators in the state, and uh, then Mr. Auchincloss, congressman. Has anybody considered handing them a really big, big gulp and then pointing them to the Hathaway Library for uh, half an hour? <laughs> well, that might be a conversation I have with them on Saturday. Well, I mean, one of the things, as Kent has mentioned, we have other needs, right? So when oh, I yeah. talked to Auchincloss, you know, my request to him was to work on our South Main Street Bridge. Sure. And that's yeah. also a, a oh, big that's an, amount. So, another, yeah. And with Senator Rodericks, he's actually giving us some money towards the fire station. Okay. So because we've got these competing needs, I am certainly out there looking for the money. And that doesn't mean yeah. next year when the fire station's done or whatever that I can't get some money for this building. Sure. But it's just me grabbing everything to keep all of our projects mm -hmm. moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we have hit 650. So 6.13, uh, I want to be respectful of the selectmen needing time to get their meeting set up for 6.30. Yep. Um, so if there's no objection to it, what I... I just was going to comment about the next meeting. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so as Debbie mentioned, we're doing a, a feedback for our building program, and the woman that's doing it would like to meet with this group as well as the trustees, and I guess if we're going to invite the COA board. Um, right. So we talked about me doing that at the next... Uh, our April meeting of this, and I just want to see if people are just kind of get feedback about. Uh, I think that's good. Yeah, it's great. Idea. Yeah. Uh, All the better. Okay. Like, yeah. like we said from the first meeting, we only say this, be on the same page when we put the message out, exactly. right? In order for any of this to happen, a library, council of aging, any building. You're going to need all sets of voters, everybody coming out to say yes. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not going to get out for one or the other, all right? You'll cancel it. As far as finances and everything else, believe us when we say we are looking at all finances across the board yep. to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot down the road, right? We have plans. We have ideas. We, we have some hopes as well. But this is how we're moving forward. Same message. It's a, a community center, campus mentality. It's the only way it's going to work. So I've said my two cents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so our next meeting uh, should be the second Wednesday of April, which I believe is April 12th. Uh, we are at the Council on Aging building that yeah. night at 515. Um, I'd like to remind everybody, too, that although the state is working on some extensions, as of right now, the allowance for virtual meetings expires on March 31st. So if we had what we have right now, we'd be fine. We can continue to have some people participating remotely as long as we physically have a quorum of members present. Uh, so it'll be important that we get, I think we have 13 people on this committee, so it would be important that we're going to have at least seven people in person in April. Um, they are trying to extend that. There are proposals to extend it temporarily or to extend it permanently. Because uh, I think a number of people have found that this is working for, for quite a few boards. Um, with that said, uh, oh, and just to, to, as a reminder for what Paul had mentioned also, there is a question on the ballot. Uh, our town election is April 3rd. There is a question on the ballot that pertains to the Bristol Plymouth project. That's a debt exclusion uh, question. So folks that were around when, when the uh, new middle school in Aponiquit uh, votes were taken 20 years ago or the police station vote that was taken, whatever that was, five or six or seven years ago. Same type of question. It's it's looking to allow the town to pay for that project 
outside of the proposition two and a half uh, debt limit, the uh, excuse me, levy limit that the town usually has. So um, please, everybody here and anybody that may be watching this later, educate yourselves on that project before going to the polls. And on April 12th, we'll have an idea of how people felt about funding that and, and where we may be going after that. So uh, I'm going to ask now at 518 for a motion to adjourn for tonight. 618. 618, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a motion from Paul Sadik. So moved. And a second from Carlos. Uh, again, I know it's a pain. I have to do it as a roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Aye. Paul, Paul Lubin. Aye. Aye. Wayne J. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Norm. Aye. Paul. Aye. Mike. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Carlos. Aye. Uh, you guys aren't going to trick me this time. Ken. Aye. Aye. Uh, all right. We stand adjourned now until April 12th. I thank everybody for coming tonight. Yeah. I wish you all good health, and we'll see you again in April. Yeah. Thank you.